Australia's naval strategy is entering a new era defined not only by the massive AUKUS submarine program, but also by a parallel investment in unmanned underwater vehicles. The Ghost Shark program, developed in partnership with Anduril, has become Canberra's answer to the strategic gap left by the aging Collins class and the long wait for nuclear-powered submarines. While much attention has been paid to Ghost Shark's potential within Australia, the reality is that the country is entering a global race. The United States, China, Japan, and South Korea are all pushing forward with large UUV programs of their own, each with different doctrines and industrial strategies. Understanding where Ghost Shark fits into this landscape is critical for judging its long-term value. The United States has approached the unmanned submarine challenge through Boeing's ORCA XLUUV program. ORCA is designed as a very large, modular, underwater drone capable of laying mines, conducting surveillance, and potentially delivering payloads. But unlike Australia's Ghost Shark, the U.S. program is focused on a small number of expensive, exquisite platforms. Each ORCA unit costs hundreds of millions of dollars, and the Navy has struggled with cost overruns and delays. This few but sophisticated model mirrors much of America's traditional procurement philosophy. Ghost Shark, in contrast, is intentionally designed to be cheaper, faster to produce, and potentially fielded in larger numbers. Where the U.S. may eventually have a handful of orcas, Australia could deploy dozens of ghost sharks. That represents a clear divergence in strategy. The United States aims for quality dominance, while Australia is betting on mass and flexibility. China has been no less ambitious in this domain. Its HSU-001 was publicly revealed in 2019, with dimensions suggesting a vehicle capable of long-range ISR and potentially more. Reports in Chinese media and Western defense analyses hint at a larger class of UUVs, sometimes called the Hailong, with theoretical strike or torpedo launch capability. Unlike Australia, which is leaning on Western industry, China is integrating its unmanned submarines into a broader ecosystem of state-directed production and maritime militia tactics. The ability to deploy swarms of UUVs across contested waters like the South China Sea raises real questions about how Ghost Shark would perform in environments saturated with hostile drones. The technological sophistication of Chinese autonomy and sonar avoidance systems remains uncertain, but the pace of development indicates Beijing is investing heavily in undersea asymmetry. Japan's approach is narrower, but still significant. Through the OZZ-5 program, Tokyo has developed UUVs optimized for mine countermeasures and surveillance. This fits within Japan's broader doctrine of defending the Ryukyu and Nansei Islands against intrusion. Unlike Ghost Shark, which is marketed as a multi-role system, the OZZ-5 is task-specific and intended to support defensive operations close to home. The contrast is clear. Japan is focusing on using unmanned systems to fortify choke points and protect critical sea lanes, while Australia wants Ghost Shark to project power far beyond its immediate waters. This reflects each nation's geography and strategic priorities. South Korea is moving more slowly, but has clear ambitions. Companies like Hanwha and Elig Nex One have announced projects for large UUVs, intended to complement the KSS-3 submarine fleet and the future KDDX destroyer program. At this stage, South Korea is still in testing and conceptual development, several years behind Australia in terms of operational deployment. However, 
Korea's industrial base is strong and export-oriented, meaning its UUVs may eventually rival Ghost Shark in sophistication and price competitiveness. For now, Australia's advantage lies in being earlier to market, with operational prototypes scheduled for delivery by 2026. The central concept that differentiates Ghost Shark is the idea of swarm warfare. A single nuclear submarine costs upwards of 10 to 12 billion Australian dollars, requires years of construction, and demands highly trained crews. In contrast, one Ghost Shark is estimated in the range of 50 to 100 million Australian dollars. In theory, Australia could field 20 or 30 ghost sharks for the cost of one nuclear boat. This raises the question of whether massed autonomous platforms could substitute for traditional undersea deterrence. The benefits are clear. Wide area surveillance, persistent presence, and attritional redundancy. Yet the risks are equally obvious. Advances in quantum sonar or underwater detection technologies may render UUVs easier to find and track. Electronic warfare presents another vulnerability. An autonomous platform is only as effective as its communications and software resilience. If an adversary can jam, hack, or spoof a ghost shark, the cost advantage may quickly evaporate. Industrial and export considerations add further layers of complexity. Ghost Shark is being developed with Andril, a U.S. company that has aggressively marketed its ability to deliver disruptive defense systems at scale. Australia's role is partly as host and integrator, with Henderson Shipyard upgrades providing the infrastructure to manufacture and maintain fleets of unmanned platforms. But this raises the sovereignty question. If critical intellectual property remains American, then Ghost Shark is not a fully independent Australian capability. On the other hand, the partnership provides Canberra with a pathway to potentially export UUVs to ASEAN partners, India or the Middle East. The global demand for cheaper undersea surveillance and strike platforms is growing and Australia could be positioning itself as a supplier. Whether this creates long-term independence or deeper reliance on U.S. firms will depend on how much domestic industry develops around the program. When placed in global perspective, Ghost Shark represents a calculated gamble. It positions Australia as an early adopter and a leader in the Indo-Pacific race for unmanned undersea power. Yet it also ties Australia's defense posture more tightly to U.S. technology and raises questions about survivability against future detection and counter UUV systems. The contrast with American Orcas, Chinese HSU-001s, Japanese OZZ-5s, and Korean concepts highlights the diversity of approaches. Each country is shaping its unmanned submarine doctrine according to geography, resources, and strategic priorities. Australia's bet is that quantity, agility, and rapid fielding can offset the long lag of AUKUS submarines and provide credible deterrence in the near term. The lesson is that Ghost Shark is not simply an interim capability. It reflects a broader shift in naval thinking, where unmanned systems are no longer experimental but central to strategic planning. Whether Australia can maintain the technological edge, scale production, and integrate these platforms into a resilient doctrine will determine if Ghost Shark is remembered as a stopgap or as the foundation of a transformed navy. The question for Canberra, and for its allies, is whether this gamble on autonomy and massed undersea presence can stand up to the harsh realities of contested waters where adversaries are racing just as fast.